join your labors and participate in fundamental democracy. Thanks to our candidates for having the courage to run, and the voters for making informed choices. You all make democracy work. Tonight we're going to hear from the five candidates for Leon County Commission District 3, followed by a presentation of all 13 constitutional amendments. District 3 is the only county commission race that you will see on the primary ballot. There are two candidates in District 1 who will run in the November 6th election, and both Nick Maddox and Christian Dozier are unopposed. The candidates are seated in alphabetical order by their last name. Each candidate will have one minute to introduce themselves and two minutes to answer each question. Our timekeeper is Ernie Payne, and he has signs to hold up at intervals of one minute, 30 seconds, 15 seconds, and stop. <laughs> each candidate will have an opportunity to answer each question. The speaking order will change with each question, giving each candidate the opportunity to be the first to answer at least one question. So Ms. Fritz will answer the first question first and will follow down uh, to her left. And then Mr. Frost will answer the second question first and so forth. And Ms. Fritz will answer the second last. So audience members uh, can ask the candidates questions by writing them on the cards provided. And we will start with the candidate closest to me. Emily. Thank you much. Uh, my name is Emily Fritz. I have lived in Leon County for 33 years, which is the longest any of the candidates in this race have lived here. I retired in 2016 after 40 years in the workforce. 30 of it was in private sector, 10 of it was in public sector. Most of it was in healthcare related positions. Um, I'm running because I'm very concerned about what's happening in our community. Where we've got high crime, high taxes, a mediocre economy, and a government that people don't trust. That needs to change. I am not one of, I'm not part of the political establishment, and I'm proud to say that I will be a change agent when I come to the when I come to the county commission. And I only have 15 seconds left, so I look forward to answering your questions. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, my name is Kyle Cross. I'm running for County Commission in District 3. I've been here in T Tallahassee and Leon County for about as long as I can remember. Um, I moved here when I was one and a half years old, so it's the only home I've ever known. It's the only home I ever want to know. I'd like to stay here 33 years. Um, unfortunately though, our local government has a problem. We don't trust our local government anymore and that needs to change. Um, being uh, the youngest one here, I obviously bring a different point of view. I'm still a part-time student, so I know the problems that students face. I don't just ask them these questions, I know these answers myself. Um, we need to keep our young professionals, we need to restore trust in our government, and we need to work as hard as we can to keep local business here, here and successful. And I look forward to answering your questions tonight. My name is Rick Miner. Um, Leon County residents want their next commissioner to be honest, hardworking, fair, and with a record of successful results. Through my experience and my community involvement, I've demonstrated these qualities more than anyone else in this race. I currently serve as the CEO of the Big Ben's Food Bank. I, I manage a team of 27 employees. Last year, we distributed 8 million pounds of food to people in need. I've also served as the senior manager for Accenture, a global consulting firm, um, and I've run a small you know, financial operations of a small business, managing cash flow and making payroll. Um, <clears throat> my public sector work includes serving as a chief of staff to the mayor's office and uh, nearly a decade of experience developing public policy at the state and local levels. I have the most extensive, most relevant experience for the county commission, and I'm asking for your vote on August 28th. Thank you. My name is Rex Rex. This I'm running for county commissioner, District 3. I've lived in the area for 22 years. I'm a uh, first time candidate and running for anything. So I've uh, taken upon myself to come out of my box as a baby boomer to uh, hopefully cure some problems that we I see in the, uh, the community. Uh, one that, that and recently just happened was a, a good girl, a nice girl that I know. Uh, 
her son recently passed away to uh, drugs. He just got out of drug rehab, and then he, he died from this deal they call fentanyl. And uh, so it's been a very tragic situation, and uh, I hope that I can get my uh, self involved in that, along with other issues that are uh, bothering me and a lot of you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Carlos Ray. I may not have lived there as long as my opponents, but thankfully I'm not competing for an attendance award. And I'm competing to be your next county commissioner, which requires a person with vision and a person with a track record of service. Since I come to Tallahassee, I have served as Assistant Attorney General, Prosecutor of Medicaid Fraud. I took on the pharmaceutical companies who are taking advantage of the most vulnerable in our community. I currently serve as Assistant General Counsel of the Florida Department of State. I do public records, ethics, procurement, sunshine law. I think all the skills necessary to ensure we have a government that is responsive to us, transparent, and accountable. I've also served in my private time on the City Code Board, Code Board of Adjustment Appeals, Code Magistrate, JNC, SAS School Board. I take every opportunity to serve this community as much as I can, and I take this opportunity to run for office because I believe you find purpose and responsibilities you take on for your community, and I think it's a chance for me to take on greater responsibility for this community. Thank you, candidates. All of them, give them a round of applause because <laughs> becomes law. How would you address this significant revenue <coughs> loss while maintaining current service levels? Uh, well, for those who, who don't know, the Homestead Exemption Amendment that's, that's coming up. Um, would, would go into effect and affect our budget starting in 2020. Um, and it's it's estimated to take a uh, very good chunk of the budget. Um, one thing that, that I, I support is the county's initiative to start pulling out and sunsetting the downtown CRA. Um, I think that that's reached its potential and, and that has the opportunity to save us uh, a, li a little over a million dollars. Um, and after that, I was raised on the, the idea of fiscal responsibility. Uh, I think we need to go through and look at each program, program by program, service by service, and look at where there are either redundancies or services that aren't providing what we say they provide. Uh, and so that wouldn't, so looking at those programs wouldn't be detracting from those services if they're not doing their job to begin with. As I've said before, uh, I'm, I have a very good computer background. I taught myself how to program when I was in eighth grade. Uh, I've been working with computers ever since for the past decade. I think we need to bring Leon County into the 21st century. Running, running a campaign has taught me a lot of things, one of those being that printing and paper is very expensive. We often win awards here in Leon County for being one of the most technologically advanced counties. And I don't think we're doing enough though. I think we can still be the leader by looking to cut down on our costs through printing and other miscellaneous services that can be trimmed. Okay. Thank you, Dot. Um, I, I feel I've got good experience in this area. Um, as the CEO of the food bank, I manage a budget, an annual operating budget of $2 million. Nowhere near uh, what the, the county budget is of $253 million, but it gives you a good sense for, um, uh, for that type of scale. Um, the inventory I have at the, at the food bank is $10 million a year. So um, the, the key thing here that I'm trying to make is that, I'm trying to point out, is that at, the, at a nonprofit, you are always stretching every single dollar. You never have enough money to, for your operations. So I've got experience working within, within those constraints to make something work. That's the kind of perspective I'm going to bring to the county commission. Um, as Kyle mentioned, you know, if, if the homestead exemption passes, we're going to lose in 20, starting in 2020 about seven million dollars a year, straight out of general revenue from the county budget. Now, how do we meet that gap? Um, phasing out the downtown CRA uh, will save us 1.4 million dollars. But where we where we get the rest? Uh, what I don't support is what uh, is easy to assume. Well, we'll just do across the board cuts. Do cuts of 3%, 4%, you know, ask every department to do that. I don't support that because all that's going to result in is every department in Leon County doing a little bit less of a good job than it did before. 
what we need to do is take a look at every single program within every single department, match where it meets our core mission uh, of our service to the citizens who live here, and decide which ones we can scale back, which ones we can eliminate at the program level. Uh, that's the only way we're able to, get, able to meet that $7 million budget gap. Mr. Rex, this. It's, it's uh, awfully odd that the, the CSC is uh, looking for a half percent on our mortgage. <coughs> And that's going to be seven to eight million dollars. That people don't realize that that's something that's going to be coming out of your property taxes. And so, in turn, now, like Rick said, we're going to be losing seven million. I don't really foresee it not passing because most people are going to go with the uh, idea they're going to save themselves some money. And I plan on sticking around for the amendments later, but. Uh, Cutting the budget as far as what uh, Ruth was talking about, I think the only thing I have possibly in mind is uh, doing, like I had said earlier, is doing a lease program on every vehicle in the, in the county and would be leased. You don't realize, I, I worked off in the oil field at one time, and those big oil rigs are not owned by the BPs or the Shell oil companies, they're all leased. So that is why how you see those big machinery out. Everything, even from tools, is all leased. And in other words, if it breaks down, that's somebody else's problem. So that's one of the way I can think of doing it. But that is kind of, I don't believe it's not, not going not to pass. I'm pretty sure it's going to pass. Carlos Ray. So the exemption passes to estimate $7 million loss in our revenue. We don't know what assumption they made to get to that figure. Last year, our public values increased by 5%, which increased revenue. I project the public values continue to increase, so that's going to make up the revenue loss, I believe. I agree with reducing our footprint in the CRA, saving us $1.4 million. I think there's other steps we can take as well. At the state, we implemented a policy that every time we renew a contract, we request a 3% reduction in the fee. This is use of our purchasing power to leverage lower costs on the contracts. You may not get three, you might get two. It's still a reduction, or you actually may increase in services, which we saw at the state level as well. 20, between 2020 and 2021, our debt service fees are going to decrease by $4 million. We've done a pretty good job paying down our debt. They ran to be very proud of this county. Let's look at the way we're actually saving money in those instances. Of actually, this $4 million generate every time. As far as the other cuts itself, it's, we have to realize that even if we lose $7 million in 2020, it's still $5 million more than projected revenue of 2019. Or actually, it, it's still going to be higher it's because the projected still growth to take place in Leon County. So before, the Leon County's two solutions are cut CRA, increase taxes. Let's lower costs the best we can. Let's implement, let's expand the I-2 program they implemented, which is the innovation idea, which and the cross-department action team. They were able to identify $1 million of savings in our recurring costs. Let's see how we can help our individual employees to identify those wa the waste taking place on the local government, give them the tools and training to do that, and help them get that job done. Ms. Fritz. I want to agree with Carlos on, on a particular point in that increased property values and, and some of the other things he mentioned may, may, may mean that it's actually not a $7 million hit. I really do not think it will be a $7 million hit. But with that said, we should always be looking for cost savings me measures at all times. I mentioned earlier contracting and rebidding every single contract. Um, whether or not the vendor has become chummy with the commissioners or not, it needs to go out to rebid. But that's where so much money is spent on contracts. On programs, we are lucky that we that the FSU Medical School is opening a new clinic in, in 2019 to serve the population. Our primary care program that the county has been running for years is $1.7 million a year. And with all due respect, it is not particularly efficient. 
but the FSU Medical School will probably absorb some of those patients and, and create, and they will be, they have more resources, they have a better infrastructure, and they can be more efficient and perhaps serve the patient population better. They're also opening up some new residency programs, so we will have more opportunities there. That's $1.7 million. I'm not saying we'll shut down the primary care program, but that should help a lot. I agree with withdrawing from the downtown CRA. I also think we need to look at the, at the other CRA as well, because frankly, the CRA has um, been not been used properly. We have nine, $90 million of economic development money, development money that can be spent on in the south side for the infrastructure needs. The CRA does not necessarily have to be, the, the infrastructure doesn't have to be done with a CRA. I want to thank our five candidates. They've done a wonderful job of not only responding to the questions, but also staying within their time limits. <laughs>